everyone what is going on thank you so much for tuning into this video whether you are a returning viewer to the channel or whether you are brand new my name is mike and the channel is did you see that and today i am honestly hyped to be joined by the living legend himself and a man that has joined me on this death note journey this far anthony E. Perez as we talk about the third installment into the Death Note film franchise after covering the previous ones of Death Note and Death Note the last name we're now talking about L change the world so very shortly we are going to hear from Anthony A. Perez however it is really cool to acknowledge in this movie we've got a different director Hideo Nakata if I've pronounced that correctly and this director Hideo is mainly known for doing a lot of Japanese horror including the original Ring and Ring 2 so he's got some impressive accomplishments behind him going into this venture and the plot of L Change the World centers around Detective L using his last 23 days of his life to prevent a group of scientists from spreading a lethal virus. So it has been known that this movie itself isn't actually canon to the original Death Note and it is certainly a spin-off. So I've just got to say in terms of like any positives that I've got for this movie. Firstly, I just appreciate that the effort in general in terms of trying to make and write this movie and differ it from the original two that are based on the manga and anime. Completely appreciate that they tried to go in a different route. Kenji Kawa, who is mainly known for doing a lot of anime musical scores and soundtracks, when he gets a chance to showcase his musical talent in this movie, it is great, especially towards the end of the movie. He puts together two fantastic pieces of music. And for me personally, I've got to give a big shout out to the actor who plays L, who is Kenichi Matesuyama, if I've pronounced that correctly. Now, for me, he definitely embodies the mannerisms of L Lollet. He embodies L. Now, yes, you know, he does certainly pull that kind of performance from the animation version of L, and he kind of follows that to a T. So, in a sense, it's not really for me a terrible performance because he's generally following that guidance of L. Could he have actually made it more of his own character? Yeah, he could have certainly added some elements into there to make it more of his unique version of of L instead of copying it of the anime 100%, but I generally applaud his performance. I've liked him throughout these three movies, although in this one, he isn't the main focus as the first two. He is a little bit more of a backseat, so to say, but when he does show up, he does do his best to deliver on that L performance. And another impressive feat that I've got to mention is in 2008, this is a movie that was in Japan's top 10 highest grossing movies of that year. And that alone is an incredible achievement. And Death Note fans, you know, pouring out to the theatres or to the cinemas to check out this movie. So it clearly goes to show that there's a huge fan base for this, including myself. Now, before I go on to any of my negatives, let's hear from Anthony A. Perez and his thoughts on L. Change the World. What's going on, Mike, and all his viewers? Thank you so much, my friend. Firstly, for being so patient and you know being cool with me, taking so long to get this video to you in order for us to do this collab. Death Note L Change the World is a prequel side story that's taking place during the events of the other two Japanese live action Death Note films that you and I have already covered. I'm assuming you've already talked about what this movie's all about, so I'm gonna get straight into my thoughts. Overall, yeah, this movie's trash. You know, I had a lot of criticisms when it comes to those two others that we did, the live action movies, and for whatever negatives the films had, at least there was a story to follow, and even if I didn't think the performances or a lot of elements about those films were amazing, I was still entertained and engaged to see where it would go, and it was nice to see an adaptation of an anime that I enjoyed that I had never seen before, even if it was cheesy or not great in a lot of areas. 
this without a doubt of the three is terrible it's the worst one it's 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 I, i'm just beyond words for how boring and just lackluster this film was it feels so unnecessary and for anybody who remembers hearing my thoughts on those other films when it comes to the character of l who was our main character in this one yeah you know that i don't really like his character I love him in the anime, but his mannerisms, his sensibilities, everything that makes his character entertaining and fun in the anime is very much because it's an anime. There are different things that you could do in anime when it comes to character mannerisms or just very goofy elements that fit the medium. Moving those things into live action just doesn't always work, which is why a lot of live action adaptations of anime have continually been failures in the eyes of the fans because they're just not able to match what makes those shows, these characters so good in the anime, they're, they're not able to match that in, in live action. And so, yeah, you have the exact same thing going on here. So in terms of positives, I don't really have very many. I have to be completely and utterly honest. I found this film to be rather dull. There's not a whole lot about it that's really overly exciting. I was very bored while watching this and you know i thought it was cool i guess that this movie is side by side with the other films that we'd already seen and so we're kind of seeing him deal with a different thing and kind of dealing with some stuff in the background while we know that the character light is the main character we're focusing on in the other movies so i guess it's cool that l was doing this at the same time but yeah i just don't like this actor who plays l i, I don't really think that he captured the character well in a way that you know takes the mannerisms of the character but makes him something new that works with live action um it very well could have been what he was directed to do as well but overall i just think he leans too heavily into the things that the character does the way the character slouches the way the character sits on chairs the consistent need to eat the way he says dialogue the way he looks at people there's just something about it that's incredibly cringe and sure he is kind of mirroring the character so you'd kind of think to yourself well isn't that what you want him to do but i just think that with anything that's a adapted from one medium to the next you have to adapt things in a way that makes sense and ultimately i just feel like his character is so cartoony in all of this and so goofy that i don't care about a, a story that has to do with a big plague that's killing people and a virus that's going around the world that's being weaponized i just couldn't care less because he's just not an interesting protagonist and he's not an interesting character when it comes to this iteration of the character in terms of my negatives it's everything i was just talking about under my positives really i just really don't like this movie in a lot of ways it was boring it was dull uh, the story structure is all over the place the way that it tries to tell its own story while consistently interconnecting with the other two films that we've seen yeah it just kind of feels very messy it feels like they're the vision for the film didn't really seem solid. Uh, there are characters that come in and leave or are mentioned or die. And if you haven't seen those other two films, they won't really have much of an impact on you. But even seeing them in this film, they just kind of happen abruptly and they don't really ever build up to things in a proper way in terms of the narrative being told here. Ultimately, I think that this film tries to be this fun middle piece of the story that also connects to the events of those other films at the same time, but ultimately just doesn't land for me. The performances are whatever the movie movie itself is just kind of boringly put together the pacing is dull the acting is terrible and something else that's really hilarious to me about this film in particular I almost thought that something was wrong with the version that I was watching was the fact that you have actors in this movie that are speaking English at times and other actors that are speaking Japanese and a lot of times the Japanese actors are the ones speaking English to each other and they sound like they're struggling there are certain actors and characters that don't sound like English is a comfortable language for them to speak but they're speaking it to each other in very high tense situations which ultimately made me laugh because why are they speaking english to each other if they're in japan and they're two japanese people like it just doesn't make sense to me they don't sound comfortable speaking the language and then when they do have you know americans or other people in the film who do speak english they're almost like so robotic you know what i mean like the way that they were directed to speak or like the lines that they were giving us like hey who's going over there hey what is that hey we need to go over that way it was just so dull ultimately i found this film to be a, a laughing stock and something else that's hilarious to me is the fact that this film was produced or at least released by warner brothers uh, obviously over in japan and the fact that it was so hard to find here in the states you can't rent it on any digital marketplace anywhere here in the states you can't purchase it anywhere if you try to find a dvd for it or something on amazon it's like hundreds of dollars to get one yeah this was just a, a dull movie for me it was boring i wasn't crazy about it i will never watch it again and uh Thanks to Mike for having me on. I'll go ahead and pass it back to you, my friend. Thank you so much again. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So, Anthony, my man, thank you so much for adding in your opinions in this review. And honestly, man, as always, 
absolute blast to have you here on the channel. So, in terms of what Anthony said, in terms of like his negatives for the movie, for the most part, I've got to unfortunately agree with them because this movie alone, as I've praised it before, in terms of trying to do something different to the original Death Note movies. Again, I applaud that, but at the same time, I felt like the director was trying to embody a lot of this horror experience that he's had in the past by creating this kind of virus and you get some kind of disturbing scenes with this virus, which is cool to see, but it doesn't fit the Death Note narrative. We don't ever in the original manga or anime, at least as far as I'm aware, and I've watched it a couple of times, we know about a deadly killer virus. It just doesn't happen. So I felt like this director was trying to implement the horror. The manga itself isn't so much about horror. It's more like kind of psychological between L and light. I just think that this movie missed the mark ultimately. And with Anthony's negatives, I know he hates L and I've always spoke about how I felt about him, but I can kind of consider where he is coming from with that and how he and others may not take the attachments to that. But also, I completely agree in terms of the audio for this movie and the subtitles or lack of subtitles. It was just all over the place. This movie was definitely a big miss, unfortunately. Anthony is right. At times, they would be speaking in English when in other movies, they didn't do that. They spoke in Japanese. And then in this one, they were speaking Japanese, but then some characters were speaking English. And I was like, but why have they not been doing that in the original first two movies to at least have the third one, you know, the same consistency throughout? It, it was just missing. It just wasn't there. I heard that they've also released multiple versions of this movie in Japan, Hong Kong, the States, I believe here in England, because if you can see behind me, I actually own the original three DVDs. So I've got the Death Note 2. I've actually got L change the world right there and I've got the original Death Note so I am a huge Death Note fan and up above I've got Pop Funko as well and yeah unfortunately I've got to agree with Anthony that this movie was a big miss and I generally can't really recommend L change the world so with that in mind my overall rating for L change the world is so I've got to give a big thank you to Anthony A. Perez for joining me on the channel once again, man. It's always a blast to have you on and I love hearing your opinions, even if we agree or we disagree. But in this one, I think we certainly agree for about 95% of our respective thoughts. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to Anthony's channel as of yet, why? Click that link down in the description box below and go give him some love. Tell him that Mike from Did You See That sent you. And also on Anthony's channel, he is also covering the Death Note movies with the awesome Black Tastic Media. So certainly go and check out his channel as well. In the meantime, if you've liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And until the next time that I see you, I'll be seeing you later. <laughs>